In this video, I will show you how to create HTTP clients in a new way, in a declarative way that has just been introduced to Spring Framework 6. And it also means that it will be available when the Spring Boot 3 comes out somewhere at the end of this year. Historically, till Java 11, it was very difficult to create HTTP clients just with the classes that were offered in JDK. So Spring Framework had a class called REST template and later on added also a web client as a reactive alternative to REST template. And using these two classes, you had some higher level utilities to create HTTP clients, but it still has required quite a bit of boilerplate. And Spring Framework 6 takes it to the next level. So the idea is that instead of writing a lot of repetitive code, you can just declare your interfaces and then the implementation for it will be generated for you. Important notice, if you are watching this sometime in the future, just keep in mind that Spring Framework 6 is currently in a snapshot version. So there is a great chance that things will change till it gets released. And also there is a great chance that Spring Boot 3 uh, will contain some sort of auto configurations that will make this process a little bit easier. So what I'm showing you right now is something that is valid for May 2022. All right, so we are going to build an HTTP client for publicly available API, just as a like a JSON placeholder playground API. Uh, so there is a there is an API that exposes a list of to do's and you can also fetch the to do individually, you can also post a new to do. So if you use it just like uh, just to show you how this API more or less look like you can just fetch individual to do's and it has like four fields, nothing really special, you can also fetch like the complete list of to do's and you can also post them. So now let's build a client using spring framework. Six. First of all, we got to go to start.spring.io and when we create a project, important part is that we choose Spring Boot 3.0.0 snapshot. When it's snapshot, it means that wh whatever you build today, to tomorrow may not work or it may work a little bit differently. So we keep the rest as it is. We change the Java to 17 because the baseline for Spring Framework 6 is Java 17. And we also have to do reactive web. Even though we don't necessarily need to build a reactive application, this, this declarative HTTP client capabilities require some of the reactive classes, at least till now. And at least this is how I understand. But since we, we don't want to build really a reactive application, let's also add a spring web. So when both of these are on the class path, spring boot will start like a regular Tomcat with a blocking API and reactive web will be just used for the web client. Okay, so let's hit generate. We will start with creating a class that will map to this to do entry that you have seen over here. So there are four fields. Uh, let me just copy them to IDE so that it's easier to write the class. And we don't need to write a class, it can be just a record, right? Because we are on Java 17. So records are here. So we create a record that it will be called to do with a following field. So it will be a long ID, string title, boolean completed, and long user ID. And now we need HTTP client interface. So this will be an interface to do client. And we want to have three methods. So one will be to get the list of to do's. So it's a list of to do, let's call it to do's. To do's. Then we want to have a method to create a to do. So it will take a to do as an argument and it will also return a created to do. And then we will have a method to get an individual to do item. So we will call it just get and this will be a long ID before we would have to implement this interface and use rest client under the hood, more or less like here. But with Spring Boot 6, there is a better way to do it. So now we create a bean. And this bean will be a type of to do client because this is the type we actually want. But the way to create it is a little bit different. So there is a HTTP 
service proxy factory where we can pass the HTTP client adapter. And right now there is only a web client adapter implementation available. I think potentially there can be also an adapter for a REST template or for Java 11 HTTP client. Maybe, I'm, I'm not sure. And this has to take a web client as an argument. So let's take a web client. Let's create a local variable like this. And we want to create a web client that will have a base URL pointing to, to this API over here. So now where we pass it, we call build. And this will be our factory. And now this factory is capable of creating a client where we just passed an interface. So that's it, we can return it and bang, we have our to do client created almost because now we have to annotate this to do client interface and its methods to tell spring what HTTP methods are they like if it's a you know, the parameter to that we pass is it a is it a body is it a is it a request header or request parameter, and so on. So uh, the easiest one would be to get to do's, we just annotate it with get exchange. And it means that this will execute and get method hitting this URL. Our URL is slightly different because we have to hit this URL plus to do's. So we can pass to do's as a annotation parameter, very similar to what we do with Spring MVC. Like um, if you know Spring MVC mapping, this will be this will be almost the same. When we do create, we do post exchange, and we have to tell that this is a request body. And we get to do, we also have to put here to do's. And the same for getting an individual item, this will be to do's, where we pass to do ID. And now we have to mark it as a path variable to do ID. You probably noticed that we have to repeat these to do all the time. So similar to Spring MVC, where we can just put a request mapping on the controller level, here we can put HTTP exchange, where we define some common um, common properties of every method. So let's just put to do's, and we don't need to repeat it anymore. Okay. So now let's see if this thing actually works. So let's create a bean of type application runner. This means that this is a, a piece of code that will be executed when the application starts. And we will pass here a to do client as a uh, as a method parameter. So Spring will inject it. And now let's do to do just to try if these things actually work. All right, so let's run it. And bang, it, it actually worked after first time. Very impressive. So, so now we can see that we are able to load all the to-do items that is returned in this API. The same, the same will of course work for uh, posting it. So if we do create and then we create a new to-do, probably if we get it, I don't think this API actually creates anything, but we can, uh, we can give it a try. So uh, what happens if we request the item that we just created, very likely, it will not return it. But let's find out. Okay, so, um, so it's good to know, right? So it returned the list, again, it returned the created, created in quotes, because it's a mock API. So it created ID, but if we try to request it, it returns 404. So as expected, and probably you don't want to get these kind of exceptions. Like if you want your API to be prepared for something that actually does not exist, we can also return here a response entity. So then it means that we will be able to, uh, to get not only the body, but also the status codes. There is a number of return types that are supported. One thing is like uh, regular objects that you want to get, then you can also wrap them with the response entity. And also there is a uh, support for flux and mono. So of course, all the reactive things that you, you would need if you are building a reactive application.
similar to request body, you can pass the path, you can pass the request headers. And also there is a way to create your custom method parameter resolver. So when we have this um, web client adapter, or no, when you have this HTTP service pro proxy factory, uh, you can also pass here a custom resolver. And then you, you can, let's say, have your custom annotation and do like if parameter is par parameter annotated has, has, has parameter annotation. So if it's annotated with something, then you can just, you know, convert it into, into a cookie or, 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 or whatever you, whatever you need. This approach, of course, is not new. Uh, the same approach was implemented already in project called OpenFane and also Retrofit. But the benefit is that now it's a, it's not a third party dependency anymore. So when it's baked into the Spring framework itself, you can expect that it will integrate with the whole ecosystem also better, like, you know, support for, for tracing or support for metrics, for example. And this will be pretty much it. It's been my first video since a very, very long time. I hope it was useful for you. And if you would like to, you know, potentially learn more in the future, things like that, of course, subscribe the channel. And if you are on Twitter, you can also follow me on Twitter because I definitely tweet more than I actually make videos in past months. So now see you the next time.